with many WWE injuries and more. This is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report for July 30th. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Speaking to Robbie Fox about his final match in WWE, Brian Danielson said facing Roman Reigns was the perfect way to leave the company. The one unique experience at WrestleMania 37 where it was just like, whoa, this feels empty. Ironically, my last match in WWE with Roman, I was pumped for. I loved it. And it was in the Thunderdome. There was a bunch of screams and canned down noises and stuff. And I was, this is great. I love this. And like, I honestly thought that's a perfect way to go out because I also wasn't sure I was even going to sign with AEW. I was debating back and forth, but I was also debating on just kind of, I don't want to say hanging it up, but just stop doing it full time and focus more on being a dad. With him now leading the Judgment Day faction, Finn Balor spoke on the Cheap Heat podcast about SummerSlam, noting that his alter ego won't be making an appearance at the pay-per-view. I don't want to get anyone's hopes up. There will be no demon tomorrow. There will be no demon in the foreseeable future. Once we kind of finish the story arc with the Judgment Day, we'll get back on track with the demon. Bauer would then be asked about having more creative control over his character, to which he said, I would like more creative control over the demon. A lot more, and I would execute it a lot differently if it was given to me like babysit. Working with a company that has so many different levels of management and different departments that need to be kept happy, something you lose is some of that creative license that you have when you're independent. So obviously, as a perfectionist and something that I created, I would like more control over it. But I understand the limitations when I work for a company like WWE. Touching on the evolution of his character in WWE, Happy Corbin told TV Insider that haters are the reason for his success. There are a lot of doubters in my world about my ability or whatever they want to complain about. That's a pat on the back for me because I'm continuing to find success within WWE thanks to the doubters and haters because I'm the bad guy. I'm not their favorite. I'm not doing 800 moves they want to see. I don't let social media influence anything I do on television. It all helps play to my success. I'm going to do me no matter what. Giving an update on his recovery from neck issues, Biggie revealed on the MMA Hour that he doesn't hold any animosity towards Rich Holland for dropping him on his head. We're good, man. Things happen. It's a part of what we sign up for. It's not something I ever would have wanted, but it happened. Me hating him or holding a grudge doesn't help me at all. He's been very apologetic, so we're good, man. I hold no ill will against him at all. I generally think he's a good human being. I truly do. I've enjoyed our interaction prior and I wish him well. I don't want this to be the albatross around his neck, whether I have to retire early or not. I can hug my loved ones. I can live my life. My life is good. There's no ill will whatsoever. Addressing the recent retirement of Vince McMahon, former WWE star Lana spoke to Inside the Ropes about some of the valuable lessons he taught her. Coming from Hollywood where I might not have slept in my car to become a professional wrestler, but I slept in my car to become a professional storyteller and entertainer. My road was different, but my hustle was the same. I had so much compassion and empathy to these people that wanted to be in WWE, and that was their childhood dream, and I was kind of living their childhood dream. That's why I worked my butt off. The least I can do is give respect to this business that I got this incredible opportunity that so many others want. I see it in Hollywood all the time. There's so many things I audition for since I've been 18 that I want to know I'm better than the person that books it. They book it. That's just life. Things are not fair. I'm sure actors look at Sasha Banks and go, why did she get Mandalorian? Why didn't I get Mandalorian? That's life and show business. It's not fair. The least I can do is work hard to give respect to this business that so many people out there are hustling and struggling to get this spot. I'm thankful Vince taught me that. To not be scared to make mistakes. As long as you learn from it, I've been doing better. Another big lesson he taught me was the importance of forgiving. Ironically, hey, take responsibility for when you're wrong, apologize. If people ask for forgiveness, I'll forgive them, and I'll never think about it again. It's done. It's a hard thing to do, and it's why he's been in business with people for so long after a fallout.
On Busted Open Radio, Jake the Snake Roberts would give his reaction to McMahon retiring as he said, I didn't know if he'd retire or if somebody would kill him first. I really didn't because he's pissed off a lot of freaking people, man. Sometimes money can get you out of stuff. But all it takes is one loose nut to put a shell in your ass that stops everything. And I always thought that it would be something along the lines of Fox Television. Maybe that might try it and throw the ball out there as AEW has. Roberts would then comment on AEW competing with WWE saying there's a whole world out there that's still wanting more and more and they don't like the flavor that WWE is putting out there. For a long time, Vince was the only game in town. Well, he's not the only game in town anymore. There's a new game and it's getting attention. It's getting momentum going and that's the thing about momentum. Once it gets going, it starts to snowball. Once it snowballs, it's unstoppable. And Tony and they are getting close to that point and I hope to hell they do it man hope to be a part of it i haven't been on tv in several months now but i guess they're saving me for a special occasion i don't mind i'm still getting paid so i'm pretty happy On the Ringer Wrestling Show, Mr. Money the Bank Theory was asked about people calling him the next John Cena as he responded, I think as I see myself like in getting older and you know, your mind changes and stuff like that, like I love the comparisons. There's always going to be comparisons because people want to always try to relate something to something. But when you really look at the details of stuff, I'm doing my own thing, you know? Like John Cena didn't have any championships at 24 and he's a, you know, 16, 17 time world champion, you know? Possibly and it's like okay, but over that process of a career, like imagine me, but it's just like doing different things and it's like like i said always appreciative of comparisons and stuff like that i definitely agree with you know being the you know not the next john cena being my first me Talking to Kevin Kelm about the possibility of UFC star Conor McGregor coming to WWE, Bobby Lashley admitted he could have a hard time. You take somebody like a Conor McGregor, sure he's got a lot of popularity and has got a fan base, but he's a little guy. He can't get in the ring with me, he can't get in the ring with Roman Reigns, he can't get in the ring with Brock Lesnar and have it make sense. If they're willing to go to NXT and spend a couple of years learning how to wrestle, I don't think anybody is such a big name that they can just come into WWE and just do it. Ronda Rousey was a special case. Maybe a John Jones, maybe a Cormier can have that kind of fan base, but I don't think there are too many guys that can step over and do what we do. It's not that easy. Speaking to the media for the first time since being appointed head of WWE Creative, Triple H was asked about his health and how he's doing, to which he said, I feel great, you know, glitch in the road. Luckily for me, it was caught. It took a little bit to get over it, to get past it, but I'm past it, I'm over it. I got a clean bill of health. I'm 100%. I'm very aware of all of it. I'm really aware of what's important in your life, in your family, and everything else. But I love this business. For me, I approach it a little bit differently now. I get this thing called sleep every now and then. It's really helpful. The game would also comment on how WWE will be different without McMahon. There are a massive pair of shoes to fill that I'm trying in some way to step into, but I do not dream for one second that I fill those shoes by myself. It's going to take a lot of us. It's going to take a team. It's going to take everybody here to fill those shoes and continue this on, but we will. The intent is to continue the legacy of what has been going, what made me fall in love with the business that he created and take it to new levels. Take it beyond where it is now. The only way we're going to do that is with a team. That's with Stephanie McMahon, that's with Nick Khan, that's with myself, that's with Kevin Dunn, that's with everybody that's here. That's with all this talent, we have the hardest working talent in the world. I have no doubt, no doubt in my mind that with this team, we can do it. Not an inkling of doubt, it's just a lot of hard work and we're all going to grind. We're all going to make it do because we have the greatest fans in the world and we're going to make sure that they get everyone they want out of this product and then some. Unfortunately, it seems there were more than a few injuries during the next in line WWE tryouts prior to SummerSlam with Brian Alvarez noting on Wrestling Observer Live, the word is this is the last time that this is going to happen. They're not getting rid of the next in line program, but the idea of the NIL program, the point of this is that there were a lot of injuries at this set of tryouts, concussions, there were a lot of people who got hurt. It was the blind leading the blind. It looks like the days of all college athletes trying to get deals with no indie wrestlers is over. I heard a lot of injuries and a lot of them, quite frankly, sucked. I don't want to put a lot of words in people's mouths, but the last I heard was that it was a disaster.
With Seth Rollins previously noting online that his match against Riddle at SummerSlam had been cancelled, Fightful has now reported that Rollins was pulled from media obligations yesterday. But Brian Alvarez confirmed that Dolph Ziggler is the most likely to face Rollins tonight at the event. In an update on Sasha Banks and Naomi following their walkout from Raw and giving up their women's tag belts, the two were set for an appearance at C2E2 in Chicago for August 6th and 7th. There has been no word on if the two are still with the company, as there has been no official statement regarding a release at this time. With SummerSlam taking place tonight, WrestleTix is reporting that two new sections have been added for fans on the upper deck, as 38,353 tickets of the current capacity of 39,000 have been sold for the show, as it looks to be nearing a sellout. About the biggest story right now with Vince leaving WWE. What are well, your thoughts? I'm not here to talk about Vince and WWE. I'm here to talk about AFPI. <laughs> I, I was just wondering what your thoughts were on him deciding to leave. I, fans of wrestling are, are you can't believe it. Well, you know what? He'll just be deciding on how he's going to spend his free time. I think that's a good thing. Thanks. Are you concerned at all about the uh, investigation? No. The hush money? Come on. So I told you I'm here to talk about AFPI. And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later.